Boop. My head's going to be in the way. I just don't want to move it. Okay, so this patch is actually not that big. It looks really big because there's a lot of lines of things. But in reality, uh, I'll, I'll explain how, how these are going to work. So uh, the most recent patch was all talents got reduced by 20%. They probably did this to say like, oh, talents as a whole are a little bit too good. But the heroes that whose win rates went down too much are going to get small buffs to either bring their talents back in the line where they were before they got nerfed. Um, or they'll get tweaked in other ways. Okay, so uh, Royal Jelly, pretty big buff to Royal Jelly. It was already one of the best items. Um, one of the best uh, neutral items in the game, in my opinion. I think it had a pretty decent win rate. If you looked at, um, who was it? Uh, Knoxville did some data based on pro games about which neutral items were the best. And I think Royal Jelly was, was one of the highest, I believe. Um... And now that you can use it uh, globally, it's really nice. Du it duplicating on illusions really doesn't matter that much. I guess it's kind of a small buff, but being able to use Royal Jelly across the map is a really, really big advantage. Um, just because it'll get you the buffs a little faster instead of having to send it back and then I have to wait to grab it. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's just going to make the game easier to play with, basically. It's like, why not be able to do it? You can do it with Moon Shards and stuff. So um, I think it'll be nice to, to help the games. Duplicate on illusions was so you couldn't find the repo. Okay, that, that makes sense. Thank you for that clarification. Um, before that, I mean, uh, illusions do have regen, so it having an extra regen is really not that big of a deal, but that's a really good point. So for top tier players, they would be able to click on each. It'd be most useful if like you catch a PL, he uses a doppelganger, and you're not, you don't know which one of the twos is real. Because normally you can't tell for sure. If they micro correctly, both the illusion that takes equal damage to your hero and your hero will appear the same if they micro them well. And therefore, uh, if you're checking between two illusions, you could just do a royal jelly check and then you know which one's real. So that makes sense that it will now duplicate on illusions, um, which is just all around better for illusion heroes. Not that it's that big of a deal, but it'll help a little bit. Anyways, uh, illusion escape now dies if the item's not equipped to prevent people from abusing it for its illusion bonus that could be used to counter initiations basically but also want to equip a better uh, item so it's going to be it's still going to be extremely good for illusion heroes but if you're trying to abuse it then um they'll remove that so it'll be a little bit weaker okay uh alchemist buffs uh these are pretty darn close to um, bringing him up to parity. Um, so, uh, and a lot of these, I've already read through these uh, most of the way once. A lot of these are movement uh, adjustments in terms of like uh, order stuff. Maybe not this one. Attack speed reduction, damage reduction. Elk, Elk is one of the few heroes that got a moderate amount of nerfs due to the gold change thing, I think. Because with comeback mechanics being weaker, being able to passively hit creeps is going to be stronger. So Elk, uh, small nerfs. Uh, am small buff axe had a little bit of a weird situation lower strength gain which means that like at the start of the game he's basically as strong as he was before but over the course of the game continuing he's going to be a little bit weaker with that side he's getting more strength from his 10 talent um, and then they move the attack speed talent to 15 and they move the movement speed talent from 15 All to right. 10 so if we look at it now it's either strength or mobility and the next one is basically attack speed aka damage or mana regen and then from there on out, it is consistent. And in some ways, this is going to make him a little bit weaker. Because, I, I mean, either attack speed or strength kind of accomplish similar feats. So I kind of like that they're separate. Because ideally, you could argue that's going to make Axe have more damage potential. Because now he's going to be able to get the strength talent and the attack speed talent. Whereas before, you had to pick which one you wanted. And then the next level, you'd have to go movement speed or mana regen. So now it's like... You can go more damage heavy if you want, or you could go movement speed, mana regen kind of stuff. I don't know. It gives you... It's a little bit better if you want to go hard DPS, but if you wanted to have uh, movement speed no matter what, then it might be a little bit weak because you're not going to get the strength talent, I guess. That's kind of irrelevant. And they buffed the 25 talent uh, back up to where it was, I think. Pretty sure. All right, Bane. Um, Bane's talents got removed around a, a little bit. They moved cast range up to 15. They put magic resistance at 10 instead of 15 which I, I like, uh, and they moved the spell amp up by one, it used to be eight. So this is still a little bit weaker than it was before. And then they changed the level 20 talent. The The spell lifesteal talent was just not good in any way, in my opinion, because like, yeah, your brain sap's gonna be a little bit stronger, but like nobody's buying spell lifesteal on Bane. 
because you brain sap once in a while and then you ulti people and that's it so it's like, like people weren't going to go radiant spain um minus three nightmare cooldown is pretty good but it might be too small the nightmare is a pretty long cooldown level four it's 13 seconds so um i i mean i guess i guess the part that's incredible about it is that let's go test it out actually um it lasts for seven seconds so if it's a seven second nightmare and the cooldown is 10 you're getting very close to full uptime so that part i guess is very good The real question is, how long does it last with Enfeeble? Because then we'll know how close to max it is. I'll start at 20. Maybe we could just do the math, I guess. But this is 15% increase. 7, 8. Well, it's like one more. Start at 5, 4, 5. really close to 10 so basically it's going to be really close to full uptime pretty much we'll see what the timer is when this ends it's pretty powerful though very close to full uptime it's really close um that talent is pretty sick actually at first i saw negative three i was like yeah it's not that good because 40 movement speed is incredibly high it's a really really good movement speed bonus but um, getting Nightmare close to full uptime is definitely a really good advantage against the right heroes. They don't have a lot of summons, that kind of stuff. Um, Nightmare in one guy and gripping the other is a, is a really solid move. So I, I like that talent a lot, big fan. Especially because it also gives you more opportunities to like dodge spells on yourself and not feel like you just wasted your big ability. So, Alright, where are we at? Let's go back here, scroll back down. Oh, we've got so much left. Batrider talent. Right. Um small nerf to bat rider still small buff to the talent that people don't get the flame break one speaking of flame break 15 second cooldown said so put it down to seven you could perma flame breaks people basically uh beast master base damage reduced by four his win rate was really high he was like in the top five they rearranged the talents they put the hawk cooldown talent from 25 to 15 they moved wild axes to 25 giving it 80 damage so that's 160 bonus damage at 25. And the boar damage went from 15 to 20 as well. So basically all the damage is delayed on the here. Before you'd have boar damage at 15, you could get wild axes at 20. Now it's uh, wild axe, all the damage stuff is at uh, 20 and 25 with the exception of the 10 talent to the right. So um, the lower hawk cooldown is potentially really good. Um, it's a 30 second cooldown, so reducing the hawks to 16 is like potentially really good that one seemed quite good to me when i saw that change 16 second to throw a hawk around for vision and they give 900 units like that's really good in my opinion it's gonna be hard to not take that one constantly in my opinion like think how easy it's gonna be to deward you could play like support beastmaster Hooray! all right you shouldn't probably play support beastmaster but if you're playing like support beastmaster and you're dewarding it's really good All right, uh, Beastmaster, Brewmaster, talent, uh, five more second reduction on Brewmaster. It's fine. Um, your uptime will now be minus 65. That's what it used to be, I think. So it puts you at 55 second cooldown, 20 uptime. So you have like 35 seconds of downtime when you after your primal split now, which is pretty darn good. Will it solve Brewmaster? No, I don't think so. But he's still kind of good. Talent's got nerfed a little bit, but I don't know. He's still kind of okay. Uh, Brood getting some movement. Um, HP talent went to 20. He got uh, 10 agility at 10 instead of that. And loses the agility talent at 15. It becomes attack speed, which in some ways is better. Um, I mean, you could basically you can basically go damage more quickly. I think this is kind of interesting because basically this could allow you to go DPS on Brood earlier. Because before the problem was at ten, you either get spawn spiderlings or health. So it's either health or damage. 
At 15, you can get agility, and at 20, you can get attack speed. So basically, until you hit level 20, you can't really ramp into a high damage dealer that quickly. This could potentially, with like 10 agility being at 10 and 30 attack speed being at 15, like level 15 doesn't take that long to get to. You could hypothetically transition to a right click build a little bit faster. Brood's not good at it, but you might be able to. So maybe there's some play potential there. It's probably safer to still like focus on split pushing and buying like ore items and defensive items, but could work. Um, Centaur getting a 5 health regen talent at 10. I'm a big fan of this. The, the evasion talent was kind of cool, but it's such a small percentage. I don't think it was worth it. I'd rather have regen. Um, that could potentially allow Centaur to buy idler items that aren't as regen heavy. Not that he is still not going to do that because things like Vanguard and uh, Pipe are great when you have high HP, but maybe it'll work out. Uh, level 20 talent change from 16 strength to Stampede cooldown reduction. Uh, that sounds fine. Doesn't bother me too much. Stampede's pretty long cooldown. But um, oh, that's actually pretty nice. Putting Stampede on 70 seconds is quite good, actually. 70 seconds is like that magic area where you basically feel like you get to use your ultimate every single team fight. It's kind of like Puck ulti. Puck ulti, I think, is around 60 or 70. So that talent could actually be a really value. I th the retaliate damage is almost always overlooked. Um, and I think this could actually just make Centaur way better. Because like Centaur's problem sometimes is that his initiations feel a little bit limited. It's like, okay, you blink and you hoof stomp and you double edge and stuff. But like outside of the items that you have, it, you feel like you can't contribute as much to team fighting. So even lowering the cooldown by 20 seconds I think is massive. Especially if you get ags and can reduce damage by 40%. Something like that could be really good in my opinion. So um, I like that talent change. I don't think the difference of like losing this like used to be 20 strength losing the ability to have 20 extra strength i don't think is that big of a deal because it doesn't like it'll increase your uh, damage from your third skill and all and uh but it doesn't increase um your um retaliate damage anymore so the strength talent is kind of irrelevant now actually so i'm pretty comfortable with them swapping that out and they also nerfed the level 25 talent which i think is fair the uh, hoof stomp duration was like insane it was like adding a second and a half you'd have like a Almost 5 seconds stun. Okay, it was 4.25 seconds stun before. But now it's only a 3.75, which is still incredibly long. Hoof Stomp is still very good. So, And generally, I think that plus 1 second stun duration is going to be better. Um, okay. Uh, Chaos Knight uh, buffing his level 10 talents back to normal. They probably saw that his uh, performance was still shitty. And therefore, they needed to buff the 10 talents back to where they were. They removed the 20% nerf to that. So is this a buff? Eh. Kind of, because everyone else got nerfed just about. Um, still 12, every other talent is still nerfed a little bit. But maybe it's okay. Hi, little dog. Come here. Come here. Fine. Uh, Clink's getting nerfed. Uh, no surprise, he's been doing quite well. Syrian Arrow's damage reduced by 5 at all levels. And his talents gets buffed, though. Both of the 10 ones are going up. And Burning Army is back to minus 30. And the level 20 talent, the one that most people don't get, um, also gets increased. So, yeah. Clinks has been doing okay. I don't think his win rate's like stupid high, but he's he feels pretty good right now. Crystal Maiden uh, getting an unnerf on her Nova. Not on the magic resistance talent, but I think everybody takes the magic resistance. I, I would assume so. The magic resistance talent is just like really good. Having like 8% even... Uh, for your whole team is great against the right heroes against like Zeus's and stuff not to mention what you get out of it as a hero It's an extra 24 on your head um, Dark Seer talent uh, losing iron shell radius. It goes to level 15. Right. He gets vacuum aoe at 10 Which is kind of interesting. It kind of makes his 10 level 10 talents really bad looking But uh, that's Dark Seer, I guess Always gonna have a bad bad 10 talents ones that don't look that incredible um, 10 percent evasion is feels really underwhelming but Darkseer does suffer a little bit from like high physical damage output heroes, so evasion is potentially good. But 60 vacuum AoE is pretty good. Right. Um, Dark Willow level 10 talent change from 25 damage to 10 inch, so we're getting int talents back, um, which is interesting. Um, she does have a little bit of mana problems, so I don't think that one will be that bad. Um, and it still gives you 10 damage, so arguably 10 int compared to 25 damage is pretty compar is pretty good, because supports are sometimes going to want int over cast range. Generally not the case, but I mean, if you're going DPS, this isn't bad either necessarily. But 100 cast range is really good on Dark Will. Extra cast range makes it a lot easier to do, like, Cursed Crown setups and stuff like that, or land um, Bramble Mazes uh, in front of 
uh, retreating enemies. And now you have a better damage talent at level 20, which is fine. The spell lifesteal talent was not very good in my opinion. Because so you don't really need that much spell lifesteal, even though it's decent with Bedlam. Um, Terror's Duration, 25 buff. The attack speed reduced at 25. Uh, her Bedlam damage talent is still really good. Her best talents are definitely at 15. I went movement speed last time I played her, but I kind of regretted it later. Kind of wish I did had done Bed Bedlam instead. Disruptor's buff is cool. I, I like this one a lot. Lowering, uh, reducing health talent to give him 20 ma magic resistance is like another way to adjust to the game nicely. So like if you're playing against a Zeus, for example, and you're playing Disruptor now, you just always get the magic resistance without a doubt. Um, but the health also is going to mean that the health being gone means that your hero isn't necessarily incredible against heroes like PA. So against a PA, I'm not. If I'm worried about a PA on the enemy team, I'm never going to get the magic resistance talent. I'm going to grab thunder strike damage instead to hope that that gives me more leverage. But you know, if they have a decent amount of magic damage, 20% magic resistance right there is godly good. Especially if you also need to buy glimmer on top of that, you're going to be really tanky against them which will be a nice way to stay alive. So um, I like that some supports like this can basically just have magic resistance talents because it's just going to make them a lot better as situational picks. Because normally like counters are more like how your skills interact. But if you just have a hero that's just going to be getting a magic resistance talent, now you can say like, oh, if I'm playing against a tanker, Disruptor looks really good. Not only can I catch him, but I can also really start to resist his damage if I have a, a, a Glimmer Cape and the magic resistance talent. So big fan of that. Uh, Doom removing the evasion talent, which is fine. No, almost nobody took that one. Uh, to Doom duration, three seconds Doom duration can be very valuable. I think it's a, a decent talent. Um, you don't always want to use that duration. It's better like when you Doom a guy and it's a bad Doom, or if you're just trying to Doom him so he can't cast spells. But usually, that's not as that's more of like a high level thing because people's positioning is better. But um, there could be situations where that is valid. Maybe people never still take it over Devour Bonus Gold, but We'll see. And then they buff the cleave talent as well, which is generally not worth taking. Uh, but there's some potential. It's a lot of damage. Um, Dragonite talent, a little reduction in mana regen, a little buff to the health one, though, the ones that people don't get usually. Well, I'm sorry, they usually get mana regen. Um, and then they usually get damage at 15. So Dragonite's been seeing some play. Um, buffs to draw. I like these ones a lot. They remove the movement speed at 10, put it at 15. And they put the Gust Blind down to 10. I think this is really important because Gust Blind uh, basically makes it hard for your opponents to hit. You know, if you silence them with your Gust, they'll have a mischance of 40% for however long the Gust is. But the problem is that like you would never get this at 15 because that's around the time that people either are going to have Manta or BKB. So what's the point of like committing to a talent just to do a little bit of mischance on my opponents when now I can instead get to 10 fast grab gust blind and now have it be really useful. The downside of course is that you usually don't have that many levels in gust at level 10 but if I can gust some carry like a PA even um, and I have an ES 40% mischance for a couple seconds that could be really useful or even like a slark or something. It gives you like another way to potentially defend against those kinds of heroes which I think is a nice change and the fact that it's at level 10 now it's great. It, it's definitely usable. You're still probably not going to see Drow's max out gust early and that's the only thing that really undercuts this is that like frost arrows or multi shot are always going to be better to level up but who knows maybe you can get away with getting like less Frost arrows and getting a little bit more gust so it lasts longer. I'll last a little bit longer. Three, four, five, six, sixteen to thirteen scaling. It's not huge uptime, but you could potentially use it to do some good things. Uh, Elder Titan talent change. Eight strength instead of one fifty health. This is basically the same but better. Eight strength is one hundred sixty health, and it also gives you a tiny bit of regen. So that's a buff to the hero. And then uh, Echo Stomp Wake damage is reduced a little bit at twenty five to make the number look better. I think. Um, nerfs to Ember, le even less damage on level 10 talent and level 20 talent. They added a bunch of damage into the Sleight of Fist, so it does a little bit more. And then uh, level 25 nerfed the uh, Remnant Charge Restore time again. Um, I like this Enigma change. They added Stun Duration to the Malefus stun instead of damage. Before it did plus 80 damage, which is basically irrelevant because you're like... Like this, this is the issue with Enigma basically is that you sit around and you lane decently and you farm a lot, but it's hard for you to gank and it's hard for you to do anything that's really impactful other than black hole. So you get into these positions where like your hero just doesn't feel very good because it's like, well, if I land a great black hole, it'll be great, but it's hard to do that. 
And even if you do land a good black hole, you need to usually make sure that you have at least a BKB because there's probably going to be somebody outside that interrupts you. And But you also need a blink dagger because otherwise your black holes aren't good anyway, so protect them. So it's like you need all these items, and usually you buy like a mech or a helm of the dominator or something else that will make it easier for you to contribute. But it just all leaves you with this problem where like Malphus is okay, but it's heavily countered by Dispels or BKB or Manta. So adding a little bit of stun duration to Malphus I think is a great solution that gives you some better gank potential. Because right now Malphus stuns for 3 seconds to total. This is going to put you up to 3.75 seconds. And the cooldown is really long on this skill, understandably. But 15 seconds on this damn skill. It is so long. The cooldown is really, really long. 15 seconds is huge. I barely, I haven't played this guy in a long time. Uh, how do you even check that for yourself? Apparently his trend is okay. It's actually very good. Excuse me. He had a very good day uh, today so far. But uh, cooldown reduction has a higher win rate. No surprise. Eidolon attack range has a higher win rate. Eidolon damage. Demon it's all about Eidolons apparently. Probably pushing reasons. Maybe that's why his win rate is good today. But um, yeah, I think this is a good way to make him a little bit more fun to play probably. But I, I just see a lot of enigmas that go into games and the game drags on and they're, they have like a KDA of like 3, 6, and 15 or 4, 6, and 15. If that. And it just feels like, okay, you farmed all this gold, but now you can't fight well. So, and you can't gank well. So what's the point, you know, of playing the hero well? All right, faces void talent, a uh, little buff to attack speed. Nobody ever gets that one. They always get time on cast range. So understandable. A uh, little nerf to Grimstroke. He's been pretty popular, uh, reducing the movement speed by five. I really liked what uh, Liquid did the other day. The Grimstroke plus Lycan Wolves was really cool. Inks well the Wolves. The Wolves run in invis, get a big explosion to initiate. That was really cool. Um, gyrocopter level 10 talent reduced, so nerfs to gyro on both talents. This is where it gets hit the, uh, hit the hardest, though. So the 15 talent now is call down. Well, this is kind of fun, though. It's call down cooldown or homing missile stun duration, both of which are talents that almost nobody ever gets. But now they're on the same tab, so you have to get one. Take that, suckers. Somebody has to figure out which one's better. Uh, homing missile stun duration is not bad. Keep in mind, call down is a really long cooldown now. It's 90 seconds, so lowering the cooldown by 40 pulls it down to 50 seconds, which is still pretty high. But they did buff the damage from where it was before, so it's kind of okay. His win rate is not looking good at high levels. In fact, it's not really looking good at any level. But he does still get used by pros because he has some abusable mechanics. Um, anyways, uh, homing missile stuns for 3 seconds, so adding 0.4 is okay. Is that better? I don't know. I, I'll be really curious to see. This here says that it has a higher win rate. This bar is based on probably Rocket Barrage, I would guess. I, maybe not, though. I mean, it's been he's been playable for a day, so maybe people have been finding the homie missile does have a higher All win right. rate. But it could also be that like they're against evasive heroes like Storm or something, so they grab homing missile just to get more out of it. But I, I, I guess I could see homing missile stun duration be a higher win rate. Now they have Rocket Barrage on the same one as Movement Speed. This one's hard as well, but it's probably Movement Speed. And they buffed the Rocket Barrage damage. Uh, it was 12 originally. It's a lot of damage, by the way. The Rocket damage is 22 normally, and it shoots 10 rockets per second for 3 seconds. So you shoot, you're shooting um, 30 rockets that do 22 damage. If you increase that by 12, you're increasing their damage by a shitload. That's 50 per, more than 50, a little bit more than 50% more damage. So that's a lot of damage. 30 times 22 is 220 times 3. So one Rocket Barrage on one hero does 660 right. damage. If you're increasing that by about 50%, one Rocket Barrage does 1,000 fucking magic damage. Rocket Barrage is really good, guys. It's a really, really good skill for uh, for killing people by themselves. 1,000 magic damage. It's crazy, right? And that used to be a level 15 talent. So what that basically means is that Gyrocopter's mid-game is going to be a lot weaker than it was before. Because now, instead of doing... 900 damage or almost a thousand damage with rocket brush instead of 600 now he's like oh i'm gonna stun you for 0.4 seconds more good luck you know it's not nearly the same so gyro is certainly gonna be significantly worse in the mid game the 15 to 20 level and if you do want more rocket brush damage to get more damage fine now you don't get a 30 movement speed talent which is also stupidly good on gyro his talents were just so set in stone basically the only one that was flexible was the level 10 one it's like do you want the damage or do you want a little bit extra hp this game now it's it's a harder decision it's 12 damage 
175 health, and then the uh, the other ones are kind of up in the air. So, uh, yeah, Rocket Barrage is very good against sickle targets. It's really, really good. It helps uh, give the hero like perfect uh, blend of, of uh, damage. Um, Huskar Talent losing strength, or but instead gaining Berserker's Blood Regen. Let's look at the numbers on this. Um, plus 40% Ber Berserker's Blood Regen. Does that mean the max strength regen? Is that 40% across the board? I'm not really sure. But I like that it actually does something instead of just strength. Because just strength like feels like the right thing to do most of the time. But the problem is that you are kind of... It's just kind of boring, basically. But now it's like, oh, if I really want a lot of regen, if they don't have a spirit vessel, then going extra regen for Berserker's Blood makes a lot of sense. So... I'm uh, I'm kind of into it. I like that these are equal. This is good. Damage is better than health, apparently. Burning Spear is pure. I'm not surprised. That's just way better. A lot of Huskar bans. So people don't want people to last pick Huskar. This set is so sick, actually. All right, where are we at? Invoker, uh, level 10 talent. Increased from 30 to 50 Chaos Meteor contact. Used to be 40 before it got nerfed down, I think. So this is basically showing that people are not picking that talent often on the hero. And um, and that's partially because people are, they're just doing a lot more ghost walk ganks basically. Forge spirits, some of them have a higher win rate, interesting. Alacrity damage speed and plus two forge spirit armor reduction, wow. 10% win rate, but nobody takes it. Basically nobody, but it says it's better. I mean, if you get forge spirits here, and you get plus two Forge Spirit armor reduction. I think they go from minus one to minus three. So in longer fights, it's probably really good, actually. But I don't play Invoker so that often. And when I do, I play it poorly, as you can tell. So I will not be testing that one out, let me tell you. Uh, Io, uh, level 20 talent change. This, these were kind of interesting. So they had to relocate to his 20, which is probably good for the hero. And then they challenged the 25 talent from relocate to health. So he loses a, a free armor talent. He's still going to be bad as a core, in my opinion. Like it's still, you're still just really, like really limited. The slow, losing the slow on the spirits and the hero damage at 15 was just like too catastrophic for making the hero worse. So he'll still be functional as a support, but he should be better now with the lower relocate cooldown, because that puts you from, by the time you're level 18, you have a 60 second cooldown, you can lower it by another 25. So that is a 35 second cooldown on relocate. So 12 out of 35 seconds, you could be somewhere else on the map, which is gonna be a buff to support IO. It'll be easier to move your carry around different places, like to counter, um, to split push lanes, that kind of stuff. So I think it's, uh, it's a, I think it's a good add. Um, his 15 talents are still pretty garbage. But other than that, it's still, the rest look okay. Uh, Io, Jakiro, a uh, little baby buffs to his talents. Uh, I'm sorry, nerf to the 15 left one though. That one was just too obviously good. Uh, plus 25 dual breath burn damage is still decent. It is 100 extra damage basically per dual breath. Because, uh, or does it burn five times? It burns four, I think. Oh, no, it was five seconds. Okay. So that talent will increase your damage by 125. The plus 25 dual breath burn damage. It's decent. It's good. For sure. If you're wondering why my GPM is so much higher than the average Jakiro, it's because I push lanes a lot. It's very important on Jakiro. And I have a lot more last hits. That's why. Once in a while, I play core Jakiro, but I also push a lot of creep waves with Jakiro. Minus 50 liquid fire attack speed is a higher win rate. Good for that. One second ice path duration. Just not the same. I do like Jakiro. Yeah, I'm not surprised the attack range. People, like default, I always take spell amp, but if they have, there's like a lot of melee heroes that are kiteable that I'd like to liquid fire, then I will sometimes go like attack range and liquid fire attack speed. So, all right. Dang it. Juggernaut, uh, Helm of the Dominator apparently didn't work before. Omni Slash now waits for a little bit of time before ending, but doesn't find any valid target. It basically means that players that briefly like phase off the map um, 
with like man like sometimes if you omni slash in the exact time that your hero is about to slash if somebody uses manta and in that moment their hero fades it out of the map it's like a very small window but hypothetically people could like interrupt omni slash with manta style or other things that hide them briefly or if they juke for just a moment and then come back into vision omni slash could hypothetically continue slashing so it's gonna make it a little bit easier to like link your omni slash together which i think is fair because the skill is not that incredible at the moment i feel like i feel like it's very easy to get countered pa blur yeah that's another really a perfect example the pa blur went so fucking annoying actually when you omni slash uh, pa blur you omni slash him he's by himself he casts blur he goes invis for just a moment and then he's visible again and your omni slash stops it's like oh very cool pa blur still works fuck let me see uh let's test it out Time walk. Uh, time walk's a little different because you like move with it, but uh, I can just do this. Select enemy hero. Prepare for battle. Point seven five. Yeah, it looks like it's still gonna work. Kill me! <laughs> Hate that shit. I my my assumption is it's not related to the PA blur. It's still like a really good counter. But that's life, guys. Guess you just have to silence the PA. Um, there there are other examples of like Manta and stuff like that. Manta is gonna be hard because I'd have to time it perfectly, so it's not worth me like, because Manta's window is really really small. Manta would work all the time before? Maybe. Um, I mean, Manta is already good against Omni Slash anyways, because now you're slashing illusions and not just the main hero, but uh, the old Orchid Jug build, yes. Um, level 15 talent, buffing that back to normal, and the 25 talent as well, buffing those back to normal. Those are the talents that most people don't get. So, no big surprise there. Keeper of the Light, base damage reduced by 2. Kunko. Uh, more strength. This used to be 20, 20, I think. 25 strength. Something like that. Uh, buff Tidebringer Cleave. Nobody gets that one. Legion Commander, level 10 talent. 7 strength. Used to be 8. I like this one a lot. They, rather than overwhelming odds, more damage, it gives you lower cooldown. And overwhelming odds has always been like a really high cooldown nuke, 15 seconds. But now you could have the option of reducing it to 11, which is really nice. In the right games. And I'd, I'd rather do this, right? Because like, okay, like sometimes getting overwhelming odds damage might be good against a meepo or something where you're like i'm gonna i'm casting this spell to do damage but most of the time you cast this spell so that you can get fast and do a little damage so lowering the cooldown is great it lasts for eight seconds seven seconds so if you lower the cooldown you'll have seven out of 11 seconds of speed you'll be able to cast it just to give yourself movement speed um, and it'll be more available to cast in that way. So I, I might take this skill sometimes. Attack speed's probably still better. And based on the last day's uh, games, it does seem like this talent is still supremely superior. But, you know, maybe get the mana regen talent and cast overwhelming odds all the time and just be really quick. Maybe there's a build that with this talent could become decent. Probably got to be careful with it, but I don't know. Maybe you skip blink or something like that. You know, who knows? Maybe there's a maybe there's a solution that could make it decent. I'm not quite sure, but I like the way that's going. It could always be buffed more. You know, after this point, now that it's switched, lightning storm damage increased by a little baby bit, little little buff, little nerf, little buff. Uh, this one's nice. The line mana drain slow. His slow max is 35% on mana drain, so this would put it up to 50, which is actually really impressive. I like this talent. I think it's a good addition. The, the extra mana drain was cool and all, but um, I think adding an extra slow is a nice way to make the hero a little bit more viable. It's still dangerous to use mana drain in team fights because it makes it easy for your opponents to land skill shots to know that you're going to be standing still and make decisions based on that. So that's why it feels dangerous to use lion to mana drain in fights. But adding an extra slow here, I think, is is great. Really, really nice way to increase his uh, chase potential. I like this. Uh, and then it, now if you get plus two mana drain multi-target, it actually looks even better. 
Now, hypothetically, you could slow three people by 50%. That's actually pretty sick. And adding more slow here just makes this more appealing. Because again, mana drain is such a finicky thing. It either really matters or it doesn't that much. Is kind of how it feels. Especially if you have to stand still to do it. So being able to just slow three heroes for 50%, that's just straight up good. In a lot of circumstances. So the line is the new warlock, basically. Uh, Lone Druid buff on true form health back to where it was and a little baby nerf on spirit bear attack time this used to be negative 0 0.20 so it's gonna be a little bit weaker it's at 0.75 of what it was originally now uh, but again pushing heroes are a little too strong so nerfs to that uh, luna level 10 talent more cast range and a little bit more lucid meme cooldown it used to be minus four i believe now it's minus 3.5 um i did watch crit i only call like the end of the game but crit was playing luna carry and he actually went both cast range and lucid beam cooldown talents on luna and it actually looked pretty good because I mean, your, your, your Lucent Beam time is 2.5 seconds, I think. Six second cooldown. Okay. So it would go down to a two and a half second cooldown, which is still really good considering it's a 0 0.8 um, stun duration. So while your hero is going to farm a little bit slower and you won't be as fast, you're kind of creating a bit of a death ball. So it makes it easier for you to like help and follow up on allies. You don't have to go into melee range to contribute. You can still cast spells from really far away. So I'm actually liking those talents a bit. I don't think it's just linked necessarily to playing carries um, or supports Lunas to make that good. Uh, like in nerf by 10 movement speed, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, Magnus, Shockwave, cooldown, reduced by one second, a little bit more skew range, pretty small stuff. Spear Mars, mana cost, scales up now. Um, you can't butt uh, Spear anymore with Bulwark, you can't blink in, use Bulwark and throw a Spear backwards. So it gets turned off when casting Spear Mars, so now your hero's gonna have to blink in, then turn around all the way, and then throw their Spear to knock somebody back in your tree. So pro players will not be able to rely on Mars to initiate against good players any as, as reliably anymore. It's, it's really hard to blink past somebody, turn around and throw a spear. You can blink forward, throw a spear, but then you're blinking forward and throwing them away from your team potentially. So this is going to make Mars, uh, this is a pretty significant nerf to Mars initiation. In terms of talents, they move the damage to 10. They put the put a spear cooldown at 10 instead of the movement speed, which is kind of cool. The spear is a 14 second cooldown, so minus two seconds is not incredible, but I think it's nice because the spear has a pretty long cooldown. 14 is pretty huge. Like 14 is that range where like for a skill that's supposed to be useful constantly, it just feels a little bit too long, kind of. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, of that little addition, even if it's kind of small. And then level 15, uh, movement speed instead of damage. So it's harder to get basically two talents in a row that make you do damage. You can't get strength and damage anymore. You used to be able to get six strength and like 35 damage. That 35 has been reduced down to 20. That 20 got moved down to 15. So now you're looking at not as much raw right-click damage. So it's hard to have like strong combos and good damage basically on the hero. What if there's like some carry build on Mars that you could make work? Maybe there is something like that. That could be kind of fun, but probably not valuable over what you can do in the offlane. Uh, Marana, level 15 talent reduced. Uh, Sacred Arrow cooldown by a little bit. A little bit more, a little bit benefit to Moonlight Shadow. Monkey King, uh, this one I was thinking about, the uh, plus 100 armor. There are games where I play Monkey King or where I have a Monkey King on my team where he actually does get beat by some guy in a, in a Wukong's command, like Troll Warlord. I think I played a monkey with a Monkey King recently that there was like a troll and like a PA. or It was just like too much single target physical damage and you couldn't beat them. And in those games, the armor is actually going to be really good because it's going to make you borderline invincible. Like, let's see what my armor goes up to, for example. I want to see what percentage damage mitigation I have. It's probably going to be stupid low. We'll just max up here. Alright, 54% right now. We're at 95. So if you throw 100 damage at Monkey King, he's only going to take 5 damage. It was plus 100 armor for the 20% percent of. Good point. But still, it's, it makes me think, you know, like obviously having the, the big AoE is really good. But uh, in some situations, it like I can't imagine that there aren't some situations where having plus 100 armor in your ultimate isn't good. I mean, most people are going to run out, I guess. But in the games where they feel comfortable fighting in the Wukong's command, having 100 armor is pretty insane. 
So I don't know. Maybe there's some cases. And if he has an AC or something, does it go down more? Yes, it would give him more uh, physical resistance. Absolutely. But um, These guys I would argue more that you sh you would be concerned at that point to, that it would be better to have that armor when you don't have your ultimate active. Having a, having an AC on top of that during a Wukong's command doesn't really matter. But if you are fighting without Wukong's command, then it'd be really good. Uh, Naga Siren buff, 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 buff. Don't care. Uh, removing 20 movement speed, talent on profit. Nobody takes it though. More Wrath of, Wrath of Nature base damage, which could make your ultimates more powerful. 25 damage is almost always better though, because the hero has really good base stats and good agility gains, so it's going to really help you farm faster. Uh, 15 talent plus extra treant. And uh, Necrophos strength gain reduced. Interrate gain reduced. His win rate has been pretty good. Uh, buff the Night Stalker. Little nerf to Ogre Magi for Bloodlust attack speed. Omni Knight, they're shifting him a little bit. They remove Purification AoE. I'm a little sad about it. I, I don't play the hero because I think he's bad, but um, they get movement speed, which is good. It's a good talent to have. So you either have better mobility, which is going to make it easier to get to allies in time to cast spells, or you grab Heavenly Grace HP regen, which got buffed back up to 10. Um, I think that lasts for 8 seconds or something. So it's like 80 HP. Now it's 12. So it's a, it's 120 HP. It's kind of a big deal. This heals for 240 HP to put Heavenly Grace on somebody. So 240 plus an extra 120 is 360. So that's a lot of HP between these two. You basically have two heals now. Um, two big heals. So pretty valuable. Yikes. This has such a big fucking win rate. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is this like 9 out of 11 games or something? 10 out of 11, something like that. It might be low sample size. Yeah, I'm not surprised mana regen is a much higher win rate. Uh, maybe movement speed is too weak. 20 is kind of low. Omni Knight. Um, so yeah, moving them around a little bit. 70 damage feels kind of mediocre, but I guess you'd farm faster. Hate heroes a little harder. Minus two purifications, okay, it'd put you from, I think, 11 to 9, but 70 damage is a lot. Um, Oracle, I like this change a lot. So the the way this works is plus 0.8 fortunes and max duration means that you can channel your first skill for 0.8 more seconds, so it lasts longer. But now it is a plus, plus 0.4 fortunes and duration. So it affects the minimum and max values, does not increase channel duration. So you don't have to channel it for 0.4 more. It's just casting the spell at all does 0.4 more duration. So you could cast the spell and instantly let go, and it's still going to root somebody for 0.4 right. seconds. So that's kind of cool. Uh, thanks for the gifted subs. So I, I like this change a lot. I think it's uh, pretty decent. Is that 240 from Omni Knight reduced because of the bonus strength? Uh, no. Giving bonus strength to people would actually add more than that. So it would be higher than 240. Um, unless you mean regen that you gain before they lose HP. Unsure. It's a good question, though. It might, it might work like that. Like, basically, if you give somebody regen, but you put a, bra but you put bracers on them, um, how much regen do they have at the end when you take the bracers away? Decent question. Um, the 20 talent, uh, minus 20 false promise cooldown is really good. Because false promise has a really low cooldown late game. 45 seconds, I would put it down to 25. So you'd be 10 out of 25. Less movement speed on Oracle is going to hurt him a little bit in the late game for sure. Because movement speed is a similar mechanic to cast range. And Oracle, you need, you need to basically sit really far back all the time. But uh, having a lower cooldown on false promise is going to be good. You're going to be more willing to just throw it out. Um, OD buffs across the board, buffs here, buffs to his talents. He's kind of in a bad place from my, what I understand. Uh, Swashbuckle, you can't jump as far, but you can stab a little bit farther. So it's going to be a little bit harder to escape as Pango. Nerf to talents. Let's buff the talent. Buff the cleave. Buff to blur evasion. These are like back up to what the numbers were before, I believe. They changed. Um, at first, I was really confused about this. Plus 8% chance to coup de gras to plus 100 coup de gras critical damage. So what this this doesn't mean that your chance to crit is always on. What this means is that when you do crit, if you get this talent, because now it's 100%, it means that you do 100% more damage. So coup de gras you would do up to 450 damage. Now if you get that talent, it does 550 damage instead. So whatever your damage is, 
add that to your crit, and that's how much more you will do now with the uh, coup de gras critical damage. I like this better than the higher chance to crit, personally. Um, just because, in fact, let's do the math really quick. Spreadsheets. Expected damage is lower. Quit telling everybody the answers already. I was about to figure that out. Boop. Put this over here so we can still see the tooltip. So, uh, here we are, 15, 200, 3, 225, 450. Uh, 200, 325, 450 uh, equals this minus 100 divided by. So, this is how much more damage you do when you get a crit. Because 450%, nor, you, every time you hit, you're hitting for 100%. So if you hit for 450, you're really only hitting for 350% more damage, or 3.5 times more damage. And then our chance to crit is 15%. 15%, 15 percent. So if we want to figure out how much more damage this gives you, you multiply this number by this number. So level one PA crit gives you 15% more damage. Level two PA crit gives you 33% more damage on average. And level three is 52% more damage, which is a lot. So now what we just need to do is duplicate this again, but update it for what it used to give, which is 8% more. So if this becomes 23, here's our damage total. So before, and then we can do a difference goes uh boop need a parentheses like so is it the same 10 minus 6 okay Hooray. so before the 8% increase which makes sense right because an 8% from 15 is about 53%. We also could have done this ratio here. This ratio here is probably the same as 53%. So the previous talent would give you 53% more damage. How much does it give you now? Uh, it gives you another one. So what we would do is take one of these, go like this, and then add one to this, because this would now be, or we just do this, 425, 550. All right, there's our damage increases. It is straight up less damage. Uh, let's paste this here, but I have to change the numbers. It seems to be G5. I'm confused. Did I do this wrong? G13 minus G5 divided by G5. Oh. Yes. So one means double the damage that it used to, basically. So it's just worse. Yeah, it's just worse. Straight up worse. Um, it is more burst potential, yes, but I don't know if this is better. I don't know. I guess they'll probably buff this up as time goes on, I'm guessing. But it's definitely worse. You guys even see this very well? This is a one. There we go. One meaning that it's double the damage, but that's because it went from 100% damage increase to 200% damage increase. Uh, so yeah, triple dagger is probably way more DPS for sure. Against a single target, obviously the one on the right is technically better, but all right, let's turn this off. Cool. Now we know. It's bad. I think it's better for them to do it to damage. I, I like that they change it from chance to crit to better crit, but uh, it'll have to get buffed, I think, for it to be value. 
Level 20 talent increased from more juxtaposed illusions. Basically, that talent is almost never grabbed. I am curious what the trend win rate is on it. It's a little bit higher, but considering how rare it's grabbed and how close these are, is, uh, the, the obvious thing is just almost always better to do Phantom Rush range. Everybody goes health, basically. This just has to be, I imagine this has to be like bias because of uh, cases where people are so far ahead they'll just get Spirit Lance damage or something. But there's no way this, this doesn't seem good. 100 damage, I mean it's a 7 second cooldown nuke I guess, but you do so much more damage with your illusions, it just feels way stronger to do that. These are pretty close though. Uh, base introduced by 2 for Phoenix, less mana pool. A little bit less Fire Spirits DPS. Level 20 talent increased uh, back to what it was for Puck. Um, buffs to 15 talent on Razor. People don't get the Strength one very often. Buffed Eye of the Storm interval back to where it was. And more Eye of the Storm damage from the passive. So, but I assume, did this used to be 180 or was it 200? I'm not sure. But basically buffs the talents that people don't usually get. Ricky, little nerf there. This is the talent everybody gets. Uh, more backstab multiplier. Most people don't get that one. And then back to what it was. And then 25 talent. I like that they remove Cloak and Dagger. It doesn't reveal. Because it's probably really toxic to play against that in lower levels. I know Ricky gets banned a lot and has a high win rate at low levels. Uh, changing it to more smokescreen AoE is fine. I'm sure the AoE is going to be huge. Let's try it out. Pretty big AoE. That's good. Here's our AoE. Let's put one down. It's pretty big. This cast range is big too. So effectively I can like... This is big. My talent's good. This is a really good talent, guys. Cooldown is almost uh, permanent. Like, against the right heroes, that's so good. Actually, so good. Other one's minus six, which is still really good, but. Like, holy shit, dude. This AoE's fucking massive. That's like you go on a guy. And they are not getting away from you. Because you're like, oh. Okay, that guy was a little not very tanky. Maybe I should give him some more items. Try to sell one of these. Get a play now. That'll give him a lot more survivability. Alright, try this again. He tries to run away without boots. See how much far this is? I don't know. The AoE is just a lot longer. Run, you bastard. Doesn't, like, normally it felt like if you would cast it, they it would not take long for them to get out, so. Is it bigger than the four stamp range now if they're facing over the cloud? Uh. Radius is 370 plus 125. Is the AoE the radius, or. Probably not. They can still force staff out, most likely, from the center. But from one end to the other, not so much, no. I assume it's a little bit weaker there. But I think that talent will be very good at higher levels to play. Level 15 talent, increase fade, bolt, hero, attack back to minus 80. Nobody ever gets that one. Pretty much every... But, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some potential for it. Cast range is just so good on Rubik. It's like so relevant that you cast spells exactly when you need to without them going on you. That's that's really how you make Rubik a good hero. So, but against the right heroes, Fade Bolt Hero Attack could be really good, like against PAs and stuff. Um, Sand King, uh, PA especially because PA amplifies the damage he currently has. Somebody like Terrorblade just buys a lot of damage, kind of. So, reducing a Terrorblade's damage by eighty is not as big of a deal. But if like a Jug or PA 
naturally have a crit in their kit and you lower their damage by 80, then now they're doing they're critting w a way smaller number. Does damage get removed or get lowered before the crit though? I'm not sure, actually. I assume it's before the crit. If it's after the crit, it's way worse, but it's probably before the crit. Um, Sanking uh, level 10 talent change to... This was kind of cool. They added more like epicenter talents. So minus 30... They put the epicenter tax low at 10. Uh, instead of a movement speed talent. They added two more epicenter pulses at 15. Instead of the old epicenter tax low. Then they added uh, plus 25% of damage per pulse at 20. You do 12 pulses, I believe. Um, ah, fuck it, I'll just click on it. I don't want to because I don't want to see it. Yep, oh, I'm sorry, tw 10 pulses. 6, 8, 10 pulses. So adding two more pulses at 15 would increase your damage a little bit earlier. Damage per pulse goes up to 130. Adding 25 more damage is potentially 250 more damage or more. Uh, 250 to 300 more damage. Um, AoE. So it should... I think they're probably doing this to help make up for the fact that not only is the Veil build a little bit worse, but basically Sand King's position as like being able to do a lot of AoE damage is just kind of just straight up worse than it used to be. And I think that's just because the Veil build is less straightforward. And Sand King's laning is just not as straightforward as it used to be, so it's harder to get to those items as rapidly and participate safely. So I would argue that uh, all these all these epicenter talents are really nice. I'm a big fan of them. Uh, the 15 one's going to be hard to pass up because Sandstorm DPS is so good too. Like if I'm doing two more pulses of epicenter damage, that's uh, maximum like 300 damage basically. But if I but I'm constantly burrow strike sandstorming somebody, and if I get 30 more Sandstorm DPS for five seconds, that's like half of that damage with a very similar talent. I'm doing that constantly, and I'm hitting a lot of heroes, and I'm using it against creeps and neutrals as well. So I feel like the epicenter pulse talent on the left is just not value. I would not be surprised if it's going to have a lower win rate, but who knows, maybe maybe it'll be better. Looks like uh, all the epicenter talents are doing quite well. Just not the attack speed one. The attack speed one, people are usually running or stunning and getting stunned anyways. Lasts for three seconds, so... Eh. It's, it's a cool idea, I just can't imagine it's better than health. So. I do like Sand King, he's just in a bit of a weird place right now. Shadow Demon level 10 talent change to plus 12 int. This is nice because uh, you almost always buy Tranquils on this hero. Uh, especially after you make Arcane into... Uh, oh, what's it called? Um. Oh, I almost said Aeondis, that's wrong. Aether Lens, there we go. Having 12 extra int is more mana pool, it's nice. Uh, Shaman base armor increased by 1, buffed to his talents, 100 shackle damage total at 10. I think that is a cool talent. Uh, I think shackles does like 360 max at level 4, so this would put it up to 460. It's kind of a cool talent. Should make solo killing a little bit easier. But other than that, meh. Health is probably safer. And then uh, level 25 talent reduced to 30 wards attack damage. A little bit weaker. But one base armor is pretty nice. He's got pretty high HP. I think this is pretty good. Um, silencer changes. The 15 talent. No more curse slow at 15. It's now at 20 instead. Um, and he's got arcane curse damage increase at 15. Which is actually pretty fucking huge. It does 40 damage at level 4. So if you grab that talent at 15, you're increasing your curse damage by 50%. Which I think is a much better way to balance the curse. Because the problem right now is like... Curse can be really good in the mid game. And adding a slow to it was nice, but it's not like super punishing, right? It like makes them slower. You're like, okay, I'm a little inconvenienced. I'm a little bit more inconvenienced than normal. But now if it's doing 60 damage a second, and every time they cast a spell, they get five more seconds of that, that's 300 damage, actually. It was 200 before. Now it's 300. Every time they cast a new spell, they take 300 more damage. That shit's going to add up really quickly. And people are going to have to be more careful about reacting to arcane curses with that bonus i think so I'm, I'm a big fan of this buff yes they can still bkb manta lotus orb etc but pulling that down to 15 instead of the 20 talent i think is going to um make this timing feel a lot more natural the silencer where they were not necessarily going to have the counters ready to go so i am a fan skyroth mage uh, losing his spell life steal to get tenant i think this is good tenant is 1.6 extra damage when he uses arcane bolt not that it's that big of a deal 
Uh, my assumption is Skywrath Mage is in a little bit of a weird place right now, but uh, buffs to Slark. I'm sure everyone's happy about this one. Ten talents are a little bit better. They did get nerfed. Uh, used to be six agi, ten strength, I think. So a little bit closer to where he was before. And Shadow Dance Duration also went back up to one. Shrapnel and Sniper getting nerfed. I know a lot of Sniper fours have been popping around various places. Um, cooldown reduction talent is nerfed. Shrapnel slow talent is nerfed. And Shrapnel's weaker early on. So it's going to be a lot harder to play. A little bit harder to play uh, Sniper four for sure. And when you do buy Ags on Sniper, the stun duration isn't as high. So um, Spectre buff to his 10 talent to keep him a little bit back up to where he should be. Spearbreaker 5 movement speed. Sven loses a cooldown by a second for Stormbolt. And his talent's got moved to Lifesteal at 15 instead of movement speed, uh, which is good and bad. Um, Stormhammer Dispels is like not good enough to be a 20 talent in my opinion so i'm glad it's at 15 but now his 15 talents look weird it's like you either get life steal or storm hammer dispels the good part is that you don't necessarily have to buy or keep life steal for a long period of time like you could hypothetically just ditch your life steal at some point i still think mask menace is really really good but i know echo saber gets some use as well i don't know if it's necessarily better Maybe it allows you to use your stun later, but I could see myself grabbing Stormhammer Dispels almost every time now. But it's hard to it was hard to pass a movement speed before, basically. But now that the 25 is 20 and it's the same level, it maybe you leave. I don't know. Maybe you just skip the movement speed and the lifesteal. I'm not sure. Uh it's gonna make his build potentially better for lifesteal stuff, but could be worse. I don't know. More lifesteal in mid game could be nice. Maybe he stays alive. Um TA adding movement speed to 10. And now at level 15, you could be more encouraged to grab evasion if you want it. Um, if you evade attacks, it gives you another refraction, so it's potentially really powerful. So, but it's definitely not evasion is not something you'd want to prioritize often on TA. So, uh, but who knows? Maybe it's maybe it'd be good in some situations against right clickers, even buying a butterfly. Who knows? Yeah, Stormhammer dispels enemies is quite good. Uh, dispels Windrun, you could use it against Glimmer Capes, Ghost Scepters, Force Staffs, so many good options. It's it's really, really useful actually to have. But um, it's hard to pick it over movement speed because movement speed is going to increase your farm rate, your DPS by chasing people better, that kind of stuff. Um, Terrorblade Reflection cooldown is being removed from the game, which I'm fine with. Not the reflection is that bad these days, but it's removed from the game and now it's plus eight conjure image duration so the illusions you summon with your second skill are going to last longer so it's going to be easier to build them up which means that there's going to be a bit of a game now where hypothetically you could have like oh i'm going to build up three conjure images and then use metamorphosis and do a lot more damage because the conjure images do i think like 50 percent of your damage so um this is good it's going to also make um illusionist cape on tb a little bit better as well because it makes all of his illusions do 10 percent more damage so Having more of them out would be better. But again, having AoE against TB is still a big deal. Um, I would imagine that this is going to be a win, win loss reduction. But you don't have to take that talent. You could take the plus 8 all stats if you really want. Which isn't bad either. So, And a little buff to Sunder cooldown as well. Which I think puts it at 8 seconds when it's gotten. Pretty sure. Uh, buff the trees talents that nobody takes. Nobody takes the damage one. They all go to nature's uh, guys invis. And the leech seed level 21. That one could be useful, but it's not AoE, so it's not incredible. And then a DPS for overgrowth has gone up. And these are probably just buffs to put it back to where they were, if I'm not mistaken. I, the damage used to be 50, so this one's actually a buff. This is a reset, and that's a reset, I think. So probably not that much better. So I think Sven will have an Ags build start to show up now. Um, Ags on Sven sometimes is still okay. And yeah, if you have a Stormhammer build, uh, Stormhammer talents, it's, I, it's cooler. Um, you could argue that um, if you skip movement speed at 20 and go Stormhammer cooldown, but you also buy Ags, and it's not that big of a deal because it kind of substitutes for movement speed, yeah. So that you could definitely say that Sven is going to be more encouraged to go that build, but who knows? We will see. Strength gain reduced for Underlord, less raw HP, less movement speed, less cast range. Those are the talents that everybody picks, basically. So little little nerfs to Underlord. Uh, buff to Undyne, putting his decay back to normal number. Uh, less strength for Ursa. So it was kind of interesting. They put Fear Swipe's reset time down at 10. That used to be a level 20 talent, I believe. No, it was a 15 talent for a long time with the agility. But mana regen is now 15. So he's going to have more mana problems in the early mid game. So actually you have to buy clarity potions. Which is going to hurt him a little. Um, or you have less agility. That's kind of a big problem. Uh, I don't. There aren't a lot of mana regen talents at 15 though. 
So I don't know, this could have hurt him a bit. Or you could say, hey, I've got more health than I used to on Ursa, which isn't bad either. But uh, 20 seconds Fury, re uh, Fury Swipe's reset time is good in situations where like you engage on a guy, but you don't kill him and he runs away from you, but the fight keeps going on and then you come back to him later. Um, adding 20 seconds there basically means that the Fury Swipes are always ready to go. So I think it could be really good. Um, Viper Nether Toxin maximum DPS increased by a little bit. A little bit less movement speed for Void, a little less damage, a little bit more spell amp than nobody gets. Everybody gets Astral Step Charge Restore, uh, Astral Step Charge Restore time. The spell amp used to be 15, I believe, before they nerfed it down. So this is arguably still a little bit of a nerf. Um, Shackle Dot Cooldown Talent back to what it was. Cold Embrace Seal back to what it was. Strength Gain reduced for Wraith King. Minus one second Wraithfire Blast Cooldown, which I like better than the 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 Wraithfire Blast slow duration. That was kind of a crappy talent. Uh, but lowering the stun duration is kind of okay. Down to 7 seconds. It's not terrible. 15 attack speed is still going to be better probably, but there could be some circumstances where you'd like to have the cooldown be just a little bit lower. But attack speed is almost always going to be better because the, the primary way that you're dealing damage from that. And then a little bit of nerf to Zeus's mana regen talent. So pretty small as pillar totally god no nobody is dead from these patches this patch guys this patch is i know i talked for like an hour here but this is all pretty small stuff as a whole pretty small changes to heroes there are some that matter a lot like the bulwark one's gonna be a big deal for pro players it'll make mars less effective 10 movement speed on lichens kind of a big deal like there's definitely some that matter but the gyro one is pretty big the rocker barrage but like this is a pretty mild patch, guys. Pretty mild patch.